want to introduce our evangelist, Dr. Carl Hatch, back to Temple Heights Baptist Church, of course. This is the second time with us. And it's been a wonderful week. Already we've seen throughout the week in excess of 270 that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We've seen the baptismal waters stirred every night as folks have followed the Lord in baptism. Dr. Hatch is from Abilene, Texas, an evangelist that goes from one end of America to the other end, spreading the gospel, preaching his heart out with a real passion, burden for those that are lost. And I praise God for him. Praise God that he's willing to dedicate his life to this matter of soul winning. What a joy it's been. I know that you'll welcome him. The Harrison's going to come and sing, then Dr. Hatch going to bring the message. I found a singing. Thank you, and you may be seated. Brother Don Stevens is coming to sing for you, and then Dr. Carl Hatch with the message for tonight. Brother Stevens. For the work of Christ they suffered, Paul and Silas, in the jail, although beaten. Scorned and laughed at, they kept faith he would not fail. Through the acts of those disciples on the Lord, the jailer called. And I'm sure if you would ask them, they would say it's worth it all. There'll be some valleys along with the mountains There'll be some stones in your way to make you fall It'll be a long and winding road to serving Jesus But just one soul to trust in Him It's worth it all Although Stephen Labor daily for the Christ of Calvary. The words he spoke, it made men angry. They declared his death must be as they began to cast the stones and he began to fall. He looked up in the Savior's face. And he knew it's worth it all. There'll be some valleys along with the mountains. There'll be some stones in your way to make you fall. It'll be a long and winding road to serving Jesus. But just one soul to trust in Him, it's worth it all. When Christ Jesus went to Calvary and He hung upon the tree, aren't you glad He thought it worth it? And He died to set us free. Christ didn't say the way was easy or that we'd never fall. Just remember that precious Jesus and that makes it worth it all. There'll be some valleys along with the mountains. There'll be some stones in your way to make you fall. It'll 
be a long and winding road to serving Jesus. But just one soul to trust in Him, it's worth it all. But just one soul to trust in Him, it's worth it all. Amen. I tell you, that's beautiful, isn't it? A young man wrote that song. And I certainly believe that God laid on his heart the words to every word he sang tonight. That was beautiful, wasn't it? There are many valleys, many mountaintops. And I'm thrilled the way the Lord's blessed this week. It's just been a joy. I've had a lot of requests to sing again, but I've prayed about it. <laughs> You don't have to amen that now. There's some things you don't amen. I certainly wish you could have been here in the service a little earlier. Now, these fellows have really been cutting me apart. But my day's coming, amen? Uh, they've had their fun, but I'll have mine later on. I want to say thank you for really working for this great revival we've had this week. And I might add this, that I have never been in a church where the Spirit of God's moving liberty. Uh, You walk in the front door, there's power when you walk in. I mean that. There's a sweet, sweet spirit uh, here in this place. And I really thank the Lord for it. I want to bring a message tonight on the valleys of life. I want you to turn to Psalms 23, if you would. While you're turning there, I'd like to pray, Dear Lord Jesus, we're thankful tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. Dear Jesus, we come to Thee tonight expecting Thy blessings upon the service. Lord Jesus, we know that this message will be in vain unless it's anointed of Thee. Dear Jesus, You couldn't come, so You sent me to fill Your shoes. So I'm going to do my best in preaching this message. Lord, there may be some here tonight that would be in a valley. It seems as though the whole world's closed in on them. May something be said that would encourage them. There may be someone here tonight, dear Lord Jesus, and they feel that this will be their last night. May they hear something that might encourage them to go on and lift the blood-stained banner to live for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the dear, precious souls that's been saved. May, dear Lord, you convict and convert, and we'll thank you in your precious name we pray. Amen. I would imagine what I'm going to read tonight is probably read about as much as any Scripture verse in the Bible. Psalms 23 probably is no doubt preached about, read, as much as any verses. Many homes you go in when you see the family Bible, it's turned to Psalms 23. Many times when you go in the hospitals and you see the Bible, it's turned to Psalms 23. Many times when you go in the hotel or motel and you find the Bible, many times it's turned to Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. I want to get my message tonight out of verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I want to bring a message on the valleys of life. You know, life is filled with sunshine and rain. Every day there's someone in the valley. Tonight you may be in one of these valleys that I'm going to be talking about. But I'm glad to report tonight, regardless what valley you may be in, that there's a mountaintop on the other side. And I pray tonight as the valleys are talked about, And as we discuss the valleys tonight, that you can remember one thing. There is a reason for that valley. 
I think of the valley of sickness. Now, the valleys I'm going to talk about, maybe you have never been in them, but you will be in these valleys. Every valley tonight that you'll hear about, if you've never gone through that valley, you will go through it. I think of the valley of sickness. There's many people going through that valley today. I think of old Job as he's going through the valley of sickness. He lost everything that he had. Seemed as though the world had closed in on him. Then sickness came upon him. His body was loaded. He was afflicted from his head to his feet. His entire body was loaded with boils hanging all over him. Yet he'd lost everything that he had. His wife came up to him. And I'm sure she didn't call him honey. She probably called him old man. And I might add that tonight. If you're guilty of calling your wife old man, you call your wife old lady, your husband old man, you need to hit the moaner's bench. I'll tell you, we're living in a day when there is no respect for the husband or the wife or the children. We're living in a day when the children call their daddy old man and their mama old lady. That's what's wrong with America. You get your home right and everything else will be right. I'll tell you tonight, we need to take a lesson from old Job. Even though he'd lost everything that he had, and his wife came up to him and said, Listen to me, why don't you curse God and die? Don't you know you've lost everything? He told that wife of his, he said, Why don't you shut up? You talk like an evil woman. God, give us some men tonight that'll leave their home, but lead it with love. Old Job going through that valley of sickness. I imagine he felt like it's all over. But aren't you glad tonight that he stood there when he said, You talk like an evil woman, but he said one thing that's never left my heart. He said, I know. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Bless God, he knew even though he was in a valley, he knew his Redeemer was there. Amen. He didn't doubt one time that he'd seen through that valley. I think many times when I think of the valley of sickness, I think of my dear own family. My father for 25 years, flat of his back, bed fast, didn't work. We had to work as children at 11 years of age. All of the children had to work and make a living. I've seen my father lay flat of his back, grasping for breath. We lived in a small country town. My father got on the dope morphine. The doctor got him on it. I saw him six times a day, take a needle and shoot into his body. Many, many times his body got so hard, he'd take and try to put a needle in there and the needle would break off in his body. Many times I've heard him say, Son, come and pull the needle out of my body. I've watched him when he'd look up and grasp for breath. One night in the way out of the night when my sister crawled in the bed, my father's tongue was hanging out of his mouth because of the want for that dope. I heard him cry out, Oh, God. Oh, God! But I heard my mother there in the back bedroom in the other bedroom, and I heard her crying out what old Job did. I heard her crying out, Oh, no! Oh, no! That my Redeemer liveth! You may be going through the valley of sickness, but I want to report to you, He's with you. You go yonder to the hospital bed, that dear saint of God lying there on the bed, you tell him, you tell him the, that the Lord's not with him. You'll break every heart in that hospital. And I want to say to you today, you go yonder to that hospital and you hold the hand of that saint of God while they're in the valley of sickness and you can tell them there's a mountaintop on the other side and they'll put a smile on their face. Oh, I know. I know that my Redeemer liveth. If you're going through that valley, He'll see you through it. I think many times while Job was going through the valley of sick and suffering, I no doubt he wondered. No doubt he wondered. But thanks be unto God, he said, I know he lives. You may be going through the valley of trials, but they're necessary. They're necessary. I think many times when we go through the trials... We don't realize, but God's allowing us to go through these trials. Always when you're going through the trials, it's necessary to try our faith. It's necessary to try our faith. I think of William Booth. 
William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, one Sunday morning, he was preaching on my grace is sufficient for ever need. I can hear him now while he's there preaching that Sunday morning. And after the service, a young a woman came up and asked him, said, Mr. Booth, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that his grace is sufficient for every need in your life? And he said, Lady, I do believe that. I do believe that. I believe that his grace is sufficient for every need. Then it wasn't too long, or several weeks later after that, that he lost his seven-year-old daughter. That day out in the cemetery when William Booth preached the funeral of his little girl, then later went over as they went to lay the coffin down into the ground. He lay his hands on the coffin and he began to pray. Then that same lady that talked to him on Sunday morning said, Do you really believe the grace is sufficient? She walked up and put her hands on his shoulder and said, Now, Mr. Booth, do you believe that? And he said, Ma'am, if I didn't believe that, if I didn't believe that, I couldn't stand here and pray over the body of my little girl. Yes, I believe that in trials, His grace is sufficient for every need. And I'm glad the report tonight, if you're going through the valley of trials, you see you through it. And I believe tonight, if you've never had a trial, you're going to have that trial because it's necessary to try your faith the Lord wants, he said, don't think in 1 Peter 1 and verse 7, he talks about don't think it's strange for the trials of our faith. When we're going through these trials, he's getting us ready. We'll come out like gold. He'll let's go. That's why he says the trial's unnecessary. And then let me say this, the valley of persecution. The valley of persecution. About everybody goes through this valley. My prayer is tonight when you're going through that valley of persecution that you be like old Stephen there in the book of Acts. When he was going through the valley of persecution, when they told Stephen he'd have to quit talking about what he's talking about, and he said, I can't do it. They took old Stephen out there and they began to stone him to death. I can see him now, can't you? Most of us would have said, oh, we'll... Well, go ahead and go along with what you say. But I thank God for Stephen. God, give us some men like that today in America that will not dip their colors or compromise, that will stand up to the Word of God and say, I will not dip my colors. I'll be a Stephen. We need some men today that will stand up like he stood up. I can see him now when he's out there and the stones being thrown upon him. Blood flowing down his side. And old Stephen, while he's standing there, and while the blood coming down his face, and he looked up, and he said, I see Jesus. I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. You read the entire Bible from cover to cover. You don't find where that set Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Every place he's sitting at the Father's right hand. But I sometimes wonder if he must have been standing there and he's saying, that's going to be the last stone, boy. That's the last stone you're going to throw at my child. I'm going to call him home. He's not going to take any more. And I might say to you tonight, while you're going through that valley of persecution, he'll be there. I'll tell you tonight, they'll throw that last stone. And when the Lord says, it's finished, it's finished. You're not throwing anymore. That's the last stone you're going to throw. All the apostles went through that valley. Jesus Christ went through that valley. Many times they'd try to take the Son of God's life, but they couldn't. He said, the time is not yet come. Many times he'd go over here to take his life. He wouldn't be there. He'd be somewhere else. But when that time arrived, when he said, It's time that I must go. Ah, he said, I've finished it now. I've finished what I came to do. And it's all over. But in not one time could they find him unless he wanted them to. He went through the valley 
of persecution. All the apostles went through it, every one of them. All the apostles except John, he died in the valley of persecution. He died in the valley. I think many times when John the Baptist, the beloved, the forerunner for God, when that, that wicked woman said, I'll dance and I'll dance for his head. I can see her now there while she's dancing for the head of John the Baptist. And not one time did he compromise or did he dip his colors, even though he knew that death was creeping on. And there he died in the valley of persecution. Oh, God help us today. I'll tell you, we think of these great men that were persecuted like the Apostle Paul. Many others that were left, the Apostle Paul was dragged out of that city, stoned and left to be dead. I'll tell you tonight, we don't pay much of a price to stand up for God. I can tell you if we'll stand like John the Baptist stood, if we'll stand like the Apostle Paul stood, we'll go through the valleys they went through. And some of you die. If you'll do what they done, you'll die in the valley of persecution. Oh, God, give us some John the Baptist tonight. God, give us some Stevens tonight. God, give us some Apollos tonight. Breaks my heart when I hear from year after year, when I hear of Christians and preachers and, and people that's supposed to be living for God, and they're beginning to dip their colors across America. God, give us some men and women and boys and girls uh, that while they're being persecuted, uh, they'll stand up. They all be counted. I can tell you one thing. I thank God for a preacher like we got here. I can say every year I've been here, he's, he's never changed. I thank God for that. Oh, listen to me tonight. You say, yeah, but he's a preacher. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Every born-again, blood-bought child of God ought to stand for what's right. Every, and I hope you're listening here tonight, and as you listen later on, that you'll hear on this, that every born-again, blood-bought child of God will stand up and say, I'll be counted regardless what the price is. I'll be a Stephen. I'll be a John the Baptist. I'll be a Paul. That's what I'll be. While I'm going through the valley of persecution, I'll believe God will see me through. Then i find this valley... And that's the valley of doubts. The valley of doubts. If you've never gone through that valley, you will. Just about every saint, every child of God, at one time you've doubted. At one time you've doubted. We think of old John while he was there in prison in Matthew 11. You find that while he was in prison, he got in the valley of doubt. I'll tell you tonight, it's easy to get in that valley. It's easy to get in the valley. While you're going through these valleys, you're wondering, is God going to see me through? How many times have you been in that valley? Oh, a lot of times when maybe the valley of sickness or the valley of persecution, and you get to thinking, is the Lord going to see me through? I want to say to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen and young people alike, my Bible says He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll stick closer than a brother. I'll tell you tonight, I've seen the time when it seemed as though the last moment my wife and I have gone through that valley of doubt, and I'm sure you have. While we've been in the valley of sickness and we've gone through that, with our children and with my wife, we've gone through that valley. And I've seen the time when I begin to doubt. I wondered if the Lord was going to see us through. I want to report to you tonight, not one time did the Lord ever let me down. Not one time did He ever let me down. Oh, I've seen when the old devil creep up and say, Carl, do you believe everything's going to be all right? And I begin to say, Lord, aren't you going to, aren't you going to help us? You've been there, preacher. Aren't you going to help us? And boy, I'll tell you, not one time, not one time have he ever let me down. I got down to the line, and it seemed as though it was closing in on me. But he always was there. Always.
you may be here. You've been in that valley or you're in that valley. Christian, he's there. Oh, let me tell you. You know where you get acquainted with God? You don't get acquainted with Him on the mountaintop. You get acquainted with Him in the valley. When you get a hold of God, it's when you're in the valley. When everything's going good and smooth, you pray, oh Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. There's nothing wrong with that. But oh, you get a phone call, your wife's dying. You get a phone call, one of your children died. Are you being clothed in on pills or sickness or discouragement? And you'll cry out and you say, oh God, oh God, I need you, God, I need you. I'll tell you, he'll be there. He'll be there. I'll report to you tonight. Every neighbor may let you down. Every so-called Christian may let you down. But I want to report to you tonight, the Son of the living God will never let you down, Brother Bob. He'll be there when the valleys are deep. And he'll be there when the valleys are wide. I'm glad to report tonight, even though in that valley... Valley of doubt. John the Baptist got the valley. I think of Thomas there in John 20. Old Thomas got in that valley, didn't he? Disciples in the upper room in a prayer meeting, and Thomas wasn't there. Later they saw Thomas, and they said, You should have been here. Boy, we had a prayer meeting. Boy, while we were praying, Jesus walked right in, right through the wall. (laughs) Just walked right in. Thomas said, I, I don't believe that. I, di- I just can't believe that. Oh, Thomas, you should have been here. He was here. I tell you, it was wonderful. He was here. Thomas said, I, I just can't believe it. He said, the only way I'd believe that, if I could take my fingers, if I could place them in the nail prints of his hand, if I could take my fingers and I could thrust them in the nail scars and the pierced sides, I'd believe. Eight days later, there they were in the upper room again in a prayer meeting. Thomas was there. Jesus walked in. Oh, and when he walked in, he said, Thomas, come here, son. Come here, boy. Put your fingers right here, Thomas. And old Thomas put his fingers and he, and he pulled it. I can see him as he pulled that robe back. And he said, put your fingers there, Thomas. Thomas placed his fingers there, and he fell down on his knees, and he began to cry out, and he said, My God, my God, my Lord, my God, my Lord, I believe thou art the Son of God. Jesus told him, said, It's more blessed to believe whom you have not seen than it is who you've seen. He was in that valley. I might say to you tonight, if you're in the valley of doubt, I've seen people in the valley of doubt of their salvation. I've heard people, I say, have you been born again? I hope so. I hope so. Have you really, have you truly been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, I'm, I'm guessing, I think I am. I'm not sure, but I sure hope I am. Oh, no. I want to report to you tonight, you don't have to live in doubt of your salvation. There's only three things that cause you to doubt your salvation tonight, and you ought to write it down and remember it and bear it under your pillow tonight. Only three things that cause you to doubt your salvation. Number one, you've never been saved. Number two, there's sin in your life. Number three, you wasn't grounded right. I'm a firm believer that last one cannot be true if you're a member of this church. Because I can tell you that this church is fundamental, independent, Bible-believing Baptist from the word go. And I can tell you for sure if you're a member here, you, you know where you stand. But I say tonight, if you have one of those three, either you're lost or there's sin in your life, or you have never been grounded right. I'm kind of like Martin Luther said, doubting his salvation. One day he opened his Bible and he turned to 1 John 5 and verse 13. says, These things are written. What things? What I'm reading. 
These things are written that you may know. You may know. You don't have to hope you'll save. You don't have to guess you save. You don't have to, I suppose I'm saved. Bless God, I know I'm saved. Why? Because the Bible said it. That's why. And old Luther, he put, he said he, he closed his Bible. After reading that, he closed his Bible and he put it under his pillow and he said, there you are, devil. He said, read it for yourself. And I say to you tonight, I don't hope I'm saved. I don't guess I'm saved. I know I'm saved because I've done what the Bible said do. I put my faith and my trust in the Son of the living God and under His blood for the redemption of my sins. And I don't have to wonder, guess, or hope. I know in whom I have believed that He's able to keep me to let be. And I'm sealed and kept by the power of God, as Peter said. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Man, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Some of you listen to me. Well, I hope I'm saved. Well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't pillow my head tonight until I knew I was saved. I wouldn't pillow my head. No, I wouldn't say good night until I was positive that I was born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah, you may be going through that valley. I hope tonight you'll see and understand if you're in that valley, he'll give you the understanding. I've had, I don't know how many times out this, and people say, well, how can you know? How can you know you're saved? Well, I say, cause the Bible said it. Yeah, but just a man wrote that. Huh. My Bible tells me that he worked through men of old, uh, inspired of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, and moved upon these men uh, as they took that pen and put those words down. Uh, they were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Write those words, and I can say to you tonight, I believe that Bible is holy. I even believe the cover is holy. I believe it from cover to cover. And I believe every word of it. Amen. You say, how do you know? Because the Bible told me so. How do you know you're married? you got a marriage license, the only proof you can show me. How do you know those are your children? you got some birth certificates, that's all you can show me. But I still accept that by faith. Amen. You say, i got, I got married, i got children. You say, i got a ring, they look like me. I love her and she loves me. That don't prove you're married. The only way you can prove to me you're married is show me a marriage license. The only way you can prove to me they're your children is a birth certificate. The only way I can prove to you you're saved is if you've done what God said in the Word of God, you can put her down, you're saved, and you got eternal life. You cannot lose it. Put her down. I hope I'm saved. <laughs> Lord, well, I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't want a Lord that could turn me loose. Amen. Some I've heard some of these singers saying, I'm holding on. You ain't holding on. I got news for you. You ever hear these singers say, I'm holding on till Jesus comes. <laughs> Why, you stupid thing. You don't, <laughs> you don't hold on. He holds on. I'll tell you, you get a whole, you get out here on an airplane and you say, I want to go over the city of Tampa. And so you hold on that wing. You wouldn't even get off of the ground. You would turn loose. But I'll tell you one thing, you can lay on top of that wing. And boy, you can lay up there and just cover this city. And I want to tell you tonight that I'm not holding on, but he's holding on. Hell yeah, yeah, I know some go around here and say, Well, he that didn't do it to the end shall be saved. Listen to me, I'm as same as in the portals of glory tonight because he put my name in the Lamb's book of life and I am kept there. Yeah. Oh, I know you say, Well, I believe you can be saved, lost, saved, lost, saved, lost. <laughs> Isn't that something? Isn't that something? The Lord put your name down in the Lamb's book of life. So you have an evil, the mansion starts, you know, he starts working on your mansion. And you have an evil thought. <laughs> and, uh, oh, 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 I better, better rub his name out. Rub his name. I stop the work on the mansion. Then you say, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Put, put, put his name back down there. Start the work on the mansion. And then you, and then you get mad. So I got to raise his name out. He got mad. Got to raise. Stop the work on the mansion. Oh, God, I'm sorry I got mad. Put his name back down in there. Start the work on the mansion. Oh, I keep by that. When you say it's for eternity, I know it because the Bible said it. Not called I said it, called God said it. I believe all the Bible. Don't you get mad at me now. Hang in there. Hey, man. Oh, listen. You may be going through the valley. You may be going through the valley of discouragement and sorrow. We've all gone through it. Or you go through it. But aren't you glad tonight you can go yonder to the funeral home? Have you ever noticed these God haters? Most of them, when they die, they have a funeral. Did you ever notice that? And most of them have a preacher. Did you ever notice that? You know what it is? They're not really as much of a God hater as they think they are. I told a man the other day, I don't believe God. I don't believe that Bible. I don't believe anything pertaining to God. I said, you know what I'd do if I was you? I'd leave a note. And I'd say, please do not have a preacher to preach my funeral. Just throw me in the dirt and cover me up like a dog. Amen. If I was a God hater... If I denied this Bible, and I denied that the Lord Jesus Christ was the Son of the living God, if I denied what I'm preaching tonight, then I think I ought to be buried like a dog. You don't even deserve a preacher to preach your funeral. You say, I don't like it. I done said it. I'm going to take it back. Amen. Oh, you say, Valley of Sorrow? Don't make any difference to me. Listen. You lose somebody, I don't care whether they're saved or lost. There's that empty spot. There's that empty spot. There's that sorrow that creeps into your heart. And if you've never gone through the valley of sorrow or discouragement, you will go through it. You will go through it. But oh, isn't it wonderful when you can go down to the funeral home? Did you know you can take that saint of God in the funeral home and you can say, I want to come and talk to you about the church? There's no comfort there. You can say, I want to come and talk to you about Dr. Hatch or Dr. Schaefer. I want to talk to you about this or that. There's no comfort there. But oh, when you go to that funeral home and you take the hand of that saint of God that's there in the valley of sorrow and discouragement and heartaches, and you can take the hand of that saint of God and you can say, I want to have prayer for you. I want to take it to the Lord Jesus and help to comfort that. There, when you bow your head and you have prayer for that saint of God, not for that one in the coffin, but for that one that's left behind. And you say, O oh Lord Jesus, heal and seal the broken wounds of this dear one, this man, this woman, that's in the valley of sorrow, in the valley of discouragement. And I can tell you nine times out of ten, or I'd say ten out of ten, uh, that saint of God will lift that head, and there'll be such peace going across that face. You know why? Because you've taken them to the throne of God. And you've taken them there to the one and the only one can give you peace when you're in the valley of sickness and the valley of discouragement. And when you call upon the Son of God, He'll be there to listen to you. Oh, if I didn't believe that, I'd retire. I'd retire and never preach another sermon. I believe what I'm talking about tonight. You go yonder to that one. I talked to a family some months back. They lost their little boy. I might have shared this with you. But they lived next to a railroad track and he was playing with their cars, little matchbox cars. They went looking for him, hollering for supper, and he wouldn't come. They looked down, they saw him leaning, laying over the tracks with his matchbox cars playing on the ties. She said, Honey, let's go down and get him for supper. They went down, running down there to get him, and they got down. He never did see a train, and the train never did see him. That little fellow was cut in two. And I had prayer with that mom and that daddy who were away from the Lord. They were in the valley of sorrow and discouragement. They were in a backslidden condition. There I had prayer with them in the church when they came and gave me that testimony. 
And I prayed and I said, Oh God, they've been in this valley of sorrow and the valley of discouragement for some three weeks. And I pray, Lord Jesus, as you pull me out of the valley many times, as you pull my wife out of the valley, I have preachers all over the country. I've seen you pull them out of the valley. I've seen children of God when it seemed as though the world closed in on them and they called out for the Lord and not one time did he ever let them down. He brought them out of that valley. I said, Oh God, I pray for this mom and this daddy that's lost this little boy. I pray you'll put your loving arms around them and you'll bring them out of that valley and restore them them the confidence and the assurance of the Lord Jesus Christ never leaves them and never forsakes them. I lifted my head and I saw the face of that mama and that daddy. What a peace. What a peace in their heart. And in Atlanta, Georgia, some years ago out visiting, I knocked on the door of a man's home. He was crying and praying. The preacher and I knocked on the door and finally the man came to the door. He was kneeling down at the coffee table. I said, sir, can we help you? He said, no, you don't understand. Well, maybe we can help. You don't understand. I said, sir, the Lord does. If you're in the valley of sorrow, discouragement, or heartache, he understands. He understands. Well, he said, my son, he said, I've been praying for three months. My son came home a few months ago, went over to his girlfriend's house, and there was another boy there. He came home and got the shotgun, went over and blew her brains out and blew his brains out. And he said, I've been going out to the cemetery praying every morning as the sun come up. I've been praying every afternoon as the sun goes down. And he said, I haven't found any peace whatsoever. I said, sir, what you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. And there in that man's living room, he cried out and asked the Lord to save him. And he said, oh, God, give me peace. I'm in the valley of sorrow and discouragement. And there in his living room, when he got up off his knees, he found peace in the Lord. I say to you today, you may be listening to my voice, and I say to you, you can find peace in the Lord. Regardless what valley you're in tonight, he'll see you through it. I think yonder, I'll never forget when I read, and I want to share this with you. I think yonder of the evangelist Luther Bridges in a revival meeting there in Georgia when he received the word that his family had been burnt up in the home. He closed out that night and went home. When he got there and he looked at all the ashes, he began to kick around the ashes. His entire family were snuffed out into eternity. That evangelist walked around kicking the ashes around like that. No doubt tears of missing his family. Then he looked up into the heavens. And even though he was in that valley of sorrow, that valley of discouragement, that evangelist Luther Bridges lifted up his eyes into the glories and he wrote the most beautiful song that's ever been put on paper. He put the words to that beautiful song, Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know, feels my ever longing. Keeps me singing as I go. I'll tell you, when you're in the valley of sorrow, and you're in the valley of discouragement, and it feels like the world's closed in on you, and you can put the words to a song like that, it has to be of God. I can see him now, no doubt. He seemed like the world closed in on him. But there he wrote that song. Bless the hearts of millions of people across the world. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. That's what it's all about. And then I say to you tonight, go yonder to Psalms 23 and verse 4. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear the weep. Then with me, he said, And let me say to you today, you may be in the valley of death. If you're here and you've never been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you're in the valley of death. You're walking already down that valley of death. You're same as dead tonight. You're same as dead. You're in that valley. Oh, I'll tell you, all you have to do is by faith 
Call on the Lord Jesus Christ and receive Him as your Lord and your Savior and you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I've never known, listen to me tonight, that valley of death, that sting of death, it gets deep and it gets wide. But oh, I've never heard of anybody being hurt through a shadow of you. No, I never have. And I'll tell you the difference tonight in the sinner and the saint. I say to you tonight, lost man, woman, boy, and girl, if you're going through that valley, you're in the valley of death, and there is a sting to that death. I want to say to you, born again, blood-bought children of God, you're going to walk through the shadow. Yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Have you ever heard of anybody getting hurt through a shadow? No. No, you can run along if you could keep up with that automobile, that big old semi-truck going down the highway. If you could run fast enough to keep up with that truck, you can stand in the shadow of that truck and you'll never get hurt. No, I've never heard of anyone getting hurt through a shadow. So I say to you, children of God, one day when the trump of God sounds, it'll all be over. It'll all be old death. Where is thy sting? Grave was the victory. It'll all be over. Won't that be a day? So I ask you tonight, number one, have you been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb? If you haven't tonight, you need to say, Lord, I'm walking in the valley of death, but I want to walk in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't want to die in the condition that I'm in. If you're here and you have been saved, born again, but there may be a doubt in your mind, you need to settle it. If you're here tonight, you've got a valley in your life, you want to remember one thing, He's with you in that valley. When you come on the mountaintop, you'll come up shouting. Amen. Do you know Him as your Lord and your Savior? Let us bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every heart praying. No one looking around quietly and reverently. Let me ask you again, just before I pray, we'll be playing softly in the song that will become directing us in the invitation number. Let me ask you tonight, man, woman, boy, or girl, I want you to be honest with God tonight. I've preached hard under the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord. I ask you this question tonight. Do you know for sure if a death angel hovered over your body? Do you know for sure that heaven's your home and Christ is your Savior? If you don't, would you quietly and reverently slip that hand up and say, pray for me? I don't want to die in this condition. Pray for me. God bless you. Lift it up high and say, remember me in prayer. I don't want to die in the condition I'm in tonight. I'm going through the valley of death. I need your prayers. Lift your hand. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Come on, that's right. Dear Lord Jesus, bless the invitation. Oh, God, save the soul that's nearest hell and revive the Christian, we pray, in your precious name. Keep your heads bowed, no one looking around. Please, choir, assist the song leader as he sings. And don't announce the number. Will you come right now? Leave your seat. Will you come? Just as I am. Amen. Amen. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Come on, teenager. Come on, young man, young lady. Mother, Father, come on. Leave that seat. Come. You've been saved in the home. Step out. Yes. You've been saved on the street. You come. If you're coming for me.